himself? Yes. The man himself. The man in charge? We call you boss? Can we call you boss? Sure, you can call me boss today. We call him boss today. Boss the man, man that made this happen. You guys saw the little uh, platter in the B-roll. All the food that we've been blessed with over the last little, I guess the last 24 hours or so, starting last night. Yeah. And uh, I must say, this ranks up there as probably number one. I'm gonna put it at number one. Sorry, Osmos. Sorry, sorry Osmos. Gina Ikram. I'm sorry, sorry, I had Gina to steal Ikram. them from you guys, Osmos. We had to drive all the way to London to find. It's actually pretty sad that you had to drive two hours to find the best shawarma. The best shawarma in Canada. The best shawarma in Canada. So we should, we'll say Canada. We'll you know, Canada I have guys there. that travel the world and they're like, you know, I've been to places all over the world. You guys are definitely top 10 in the world. Okay, so I'm going to say, I haven't been Canada. everywhere in the world, so I'm going to say Canada. Canada. Certainly the best in Ontario. Well, I do believe yes. that. If they're, if they're coming from everywhere in the world and saying that, then I'd, I'd buy their word for it. So, before we get into it, I guess people... People here know you, but for those in our TiVo Visual world, our media Story world time. that don't know you, please introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are, where you started, how this became, and yeah, just, just get into All it. Alright, okay, so my name is Yasser Ali. I'm in London, Ontario now. I've been here for the last 10 years, celebrating my 10th year anniversary actually today, today yeah? Today. So, Happy anniversary to me. Came at a perfect time. Exactly. So, uh, moved here to London, Ontario. Did uh, two years at Fanshawe. Met my boy Yezen. We set up this joint about five years ago. It's a little trailer in Lambeth, just outside of London. Little food trailer. Demand was so nice. We were making real great Middle Eastern food. Yezen's mom was in the back making us uh, fresh saj bread, marinating our chicken. You know she puts lemon, blended lemon and oranges inside the chicken marination. Look at that. Blended, did you guys taste that? You taste that? That I citrus? I didn't, there's I so much, there's over 54 there's so spices in that marination, by the way. Okay. okay. I, have a, I, have a, I like to think of myself as having a sophisticated palate, so... He he's, does, palate he does. he's the palate guy. He is. He's delectable. Yeah, but anyways, we started that trailer. Demand was so good. We've seen this restaurant available downtown London. So we came, we took a one year lease on it. Things have been booming for us. We're two young guys in the shawarma game, so we want to switch it up a little bit and get a little funky, fusion some stuff. Yeah. So we make shawarma tacos right now, we make shawarma poutines. Um, we got all kind of stuff. Anything we can do with shawarma, we've, we've, we've tried it. Like I told you guys before, we made Bedouin style mac and cheese. Yes. So shawarma on top of mac and cheese. We got all kind of funky stuff. We wish we can come up with all of them and, and launch them here, but we can't really do that. But uh, five years later, we're gonna open our, open three more restaurants this year. We got our first, our second one coming up in just a couple weeks, and then they're just following through month after month. We're hoping after this year, we can settle things in London and come out to you guys in Toronto. We need this in Toronto. Absolutely. Would you guys come to this place every Friday if you if, if this was in Toronto? Perhaps even more than that. Probably every, more than every Friday. Perhaps even more than that. We have daily specials every day and we have customers that come every single day for those daily specials. Okay. I don't blame them. So I can see that. I can yeah. see me doing that. You know, I lost actually, I did a meal plan on Shelby's for six weeks. I lost 6.5% body fat and 16 pounds. Good at Tell them that again. 6.5% body fat and 16 pounds. Off. I ate chicken a salads and a Just little bit of rice. Shelby's. I had, and the trainer said I can have as much hot sauce as I want. So none of the other sauces, just the hot sauce? Well, I would sneak in the hummus and the tahini. Okay. They're like, oh, it's got carbs, but it's okay. Huh. It's still healthy, right? Well, there you go. Okay. It's all, life is all about balance, man. You can't, you can't just indulge yourself every single day, man. You gotta switch it you up. You can come here and lose food. weight. You can come here and lose weight. If but you, you definitely want, need to come to Toronto. If you want to gain, I can also help you gain. Yeah, I need I need the gaining part. I need help with the gaining part. We could talk about that. Okay, so let me ask you guys about the food you ate. What did I have you guys eat yesterday? I had the beef shawarma plate with rice and salad. Uh, I had yeah. a rice and chicken bowl made with the work, spicy. And I had our famous chicken shawarma fries, shawarma poutine. 
Let's start off with the show on poutine. So now he's interviewing us. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I want to know. Well, the I want to know what you guys are tasting. Well, I'll start with the swimmer poutine because right. that's everybody's favorite. That red sauce. Talk to talk to us about the red sauce again. Talk to us about the red right, sauce right, again. Right, so no, you don't have to share the secrets behind the red no. sauce. You don't it's have in the to. videos. It's in the videos? Okay. In the past videos, if you go to the archive. Okay, then in that case, if it's in the past videos, feel free to share. So the way we started making the shawarma poutine was every single wing flavor sauce I would bring, Mr. Yezen would come and put it on top of the shawarma fries. So the shawarma fries ended up being some must chicken on top of the fries, a little bit of mustard, some ketchup, sweet chili, barbecue sauce, honey garlic, garlic sauce, spicy garlic, sprinkle of feta cheese and parsley. We try to capture every single taste bud in your tongue from sweet, sour, bitter, salty. What the, what the Japanese call umami. 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 All the taste buds. All umami. Umami. Now all the taste buds. Name it to the umami. Umami, umami fries. And there it okay. is. Huh? All right. So then you had that, and then what? Uh, the beef platter. The beef so on, plate. Go back to the platter. Go back to the poutine. Okay, we're not done. So, for me, the experience for me when I first tasted it, it was orgasmic. He had, a, he, he almost busted up. I, I may have. You might have to blurb that out. Yeah, you might have to blurb that out. <laughs> he soiled his pants. I may have, but it was unlike any other poutine I've had before. I, I like to consider myself a foodie, and I've tried various different types of poutine. Poutine. Flavor-wise. Just the, the way it made me feel after eating it, I didn't feel, like we were talking about, we didn't feel like lethargic. Yes. We didn't feel disgusted. That was my main goal yesterday. I was like, this is just a teaser. So like, get them through the night, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was light, but yet still hearty. Mm. Ooh, oh, and the red sauce kind of just... You know, it comes in an extra large, and it comes in a large party pack. The shawarma fries, yeah. We had a challenge that if you can finish this in half an hour, we'll give you 50 bucks. The large, the, the biggest portion of pack. it? It's a party pack, it's this big. An aluminum tray. Oh, wow. Yeah, that put, that, you know what that'll you put you in a coma. No, only one out of like 30 really big dudes come and do it. One really skinny chick did. She won it. And then she came and tried to do it again, but she couldn't win. That's like Interesting. That. Interesting. That's a side note. If you guys are ever into food competitions, okay. girl power. Girl sure. power for sure. Girl power for sure. All the big dudes couldn't do it in the one skinny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, tell me uh, now the beef shawarma plate. Who ate the beef shawarma plate? We all did. We all did. Okay. I was telling these boys now. A lot of the word shawarma means to spin. Okay. So some people would be just like, learn oh, some, bro. You just That's not real something. shawarma, that beef shawarma, because it's not on the spit. It's not spinning, yeah. Okay, but like, tell me, you go to every single shawarma joint, I bet you're eating dry beef. Am I right or wrong? To be honest, that? I don't like, I don't really like it when it comes off the feet. I was telling this guy, the yeah. way, I prefer it when it's just, uh, when you just heat it, when you were just heating it up. In, in order for a shawarma restaurant to have good beef, he has to be consistently busy his whole shift. And he has to be continuously trimming. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that beef's got to be made fresh to order. Yeah. So our solution for that is we just get our our uh, our butcher. He cuts the beef into like little fajita slices. And then when the customer orders a beef plate or a beef sandwich or something, we take the portion amount and we pop it right on the flat grill, make it fresh to order. And we have our marination inside the bottle. We just squeeze it out onto it, mix it up, put it right on your plate. So you're getting full flavor, no dryness, no stringy beef, no... None of that nonsense, you know, just fresh steak slices. Definitely, so the dryness part, I didn't see yesterday, so that goes to your point. That's one of the things that stood out. As soon as we took the bite and he took the bite, like, to his point, he was like, you know what, I hate when I go to other places and they give me that big, chunky, like, gyro meat no, type no, beef no, thing. Like so yeah, so the beef platter was, again, delicious. All right. Now, are we gonna are we gonna throw any but any other restaurants under the bus there? Cause I'm gonna compare this uh, chicken and rice bowl you had to something on the rocks. Ah, uh, the infamous chicken on the rocks from Osmos. I'm not gonna throw Osmos under the He's bus. He's the Osmos special. See, I've never because I like yeah, Osmos. He introduced and me to until Osmos. you come to, to Toronto, I have no choice 
but to go to Osmos for my shawarma fix. Shit. The but moment you're there. Hold on, hold on. Shelby is only an hour and like 40 minutes from Toronto. I understand it. I'll come it's here. It's worth a drive. I'll you come know here that. as much as possible. You slept through the whole ride, so for I'll you come it's here as much as possible. <laughs> okay. But we still got some good food there. Not as good as here. Not as good. Not as good as here. You know, I'll tell you one thing also. A lot of shawarma joints get like pre-mixed Middle Eastern spices. We made our own spice. It took me 30 days to come up with our shawarma spice. Yeah? Of continuously trying it out, marinating chicken, tasting it, and be like, oh, it needs a little bit more of this. Oh, and then wow. finally, I gave my spice supplier the recipe, so she sends us our shawarma mix. But it's like our recipe. It's not just some brand that some company yeah, yeah. made or whatever. It's our distinct taste. Wow. Okay. So you won't find that anywhere else. Okay. 100%. Okay. So then now, the shawarma wrap. The one we had just now. So I was explaining to you guys traditional way. Did you know that there was a traditional way for chicken shawarma? Prior, prior to coming here today? No, I did not. I knew about the bread though, because there was a place that I went to out in um, Kitchener, Waterloo. I have a cousin out there. Shawarma Royale or Shawarma G? I think it's Shawarma Royale. And they have the they have the same type of bread. But that's uh, the way that's the way we make it 100 percent unless you ask for it otherwise. So okay. if you want lettuce and stuff in your shawarma, you're gonna have to customize. So that's not the authentic way. That's not the authentic way, no. You I, might you might shawarma not see you though if you ask for No for shawarma lettuce. for you. <laughs> there it is. What? You want I, lettuce on your shawarma? I grew up ordering shawarma wraps, assuming get the tomato lettuce, all this stuff wrapped into it. I mean, I guess they wanted to make their job easier and just let you choose, but I can go to Subway if I wanted that, right? That's what I was going to say. I go to Pita Pit if I wanted that. So yeah, I oh. didn't. Oh, all right, so the true authentic taste, like I was telling you guys before, is made on that sauce bread, right? That sauce bread is like the Middle Eastern tortilla shell. Soft, chewy, and just overall better ex experience. The outside, when we toast it, it's crispy. The inside, when you take it, it's just like you're biting out of a nice piece of fresh fat. And we got our own bakery. The bread is it, it's, it's tougher than the, um, than the pita. It holds up better. It holds, it holds up, up better, but it doesn't also get as dry. The pita bread, you ever have your shawarmas and it's all broken up? Oh yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. Like, you know, it's, it's gonna hold up to the, whatever you put inside it. The bread is a pita. You yeah. stand a chance of it ripping apart, there's sauce all over the place. It becomes an awful experience. You're better off eating it in a fork. Yeah, exactly. So we learned that in our first month that we didn't want to use pita bread and we're like, you know what? We gotta distinguish ourselves somehow, right? So we make the sage bread fresh, uh, like sauce. fresh from our bakery, made every morning. Okay. This recipe, it's not a bakery. this recipe, Mr. Yezin went to Palestine and got rolled his sleeves up and got schooled by bakers on how to make bread. You know, there you go. his hand and stuff. So just the chicken shawarma it starts on the chick the sage bread, and then we go with our creamy garlic, creamy garlic sauce. We got right over there. Let me just taste a little piece right over here. You see that? Mm. No cutting corners over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Garlic sauce. Pickle sauce. Do you ever go to a shawarma joint and your pickles are damn too salty? And just ruins the wrap for you? Okay, so pickles, they come imported from Lebanon and stuff. Sometimes they're going to be too salty. Some places don't realize that and they just continue, they just serve it to you. I taste every single batch I get, I taste it. If it's too salty, not enough salt, too sour, I rinse it. I make sure that you're getting the, the perfect tasting pickle. So let's taste the pickle guys. Was this, does it overpower your sandwich? Does it overpower your flavor, your palate? Or is it just the taste of a pickle? That can make or break a sandwich right there. Absolutely. That's true. So, back to traditional way, true. garlic sauce. Pickles, little bit of french fries. Now you're gonna be like, french fries? What the heck, that sounds so weird. We don't load them in there. We just put a, a few, absorbs the flavor of like the garlic, the pickles, and the chicken. And then it's kind of like a filler at the end. So we got the garlic, the pickles, the fries. We're gonna put some chicken in there, and that's it. And then we'll serve it to you with our special spicy garlic dip. Here's your chicken shawarma. Dip it in spicy garlic, take a bite. Good you got go. all the flavors you need. What else did we have? We got the onion rings, the, the onion rings. 
shawarma. All right, so uh, the chicken shawarma poutine, same way that we talked about before. We do the exact same thing on onion rings. Okay. You can get it with chicken, you can get it with beef, or you can mix it. Vegans and vegetarians, they even want me to replace it with halal. And we'll do that for you. We got, we got something to accommodate for everybody, man. No yeah. matter who you are, how picky you are, I have something for you, and I will make, I won't make you eat it. I'm, you will like it. Okay. I that confidence. You'll inspire in our them to eat it. Exactly. exactly. Now, one other thing that was on the platter that, to me, surprised me and shocked me only because I've never really been a hummus. Fan. Ah, I like me some hummus. I've never, it was like recently I've gotten into the whole hummus thing. Okay. But the beef with the hummus and the bread, I did not know you could eat hummus like that. And like I said, I was impressed. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I'd have it again. So you can get that with beef, you can get it with chicken, you can get it with falafel. Okay. So Anything with garlic, I'm here for it. You get, yeah, it'll give you the garlic on the side, some pickled vegetables and some fixings. And, mm -hmm. Perfect lunch, light meal. You don't want to like get too full. You're invited somewhere. You're, You're like to really charcuterie going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess well, so. <laughs> you're right. If you want to eat light, you just need something to put in your stomach. You don't want to feel too heavy. We have a, a meal called brunch in Beirut. Oh, I saw that. You seen that? So it's like ten pieces of falafel. We'll give you two pieces of that massage bread. You'll get some vegetables and stuff. So you just. Got a little nitpicking kind of food, you know. Those are like the best little meals when you're you don't know what to eat and yeah, you just yeah. want to pick at something, you know. Yeah. Meal eating, that's like when you just throw the forks away. Exactly, yeah. man. Throw the forks away. It's uh, it's congregational, you know. When yeah. you, everybody's eating together, you look, you guys eat off one board together. It's much better, much more fulfilling. It actually is. <laughs> it actually is. You enjoy it better. You have better conversations. I feel. Yes, hundred percent. More family should eat. Feel more like family. Exactly. That's what it is. Still, <laughs> feel more like family. Okay. So, no. Big question I want to ask. All right. You sound very passionate about the business. Mm. Even when we're talking off camera, I could see the passion. And just your eyes and Absolutely. your tone and like just the way you were describing how everything began. What was your inspiration? What like what was that fire inside you that made you say, you know what? I need to do this, I wanna do this, and this is gonna happen. Alright, so you guys you guys known me from time, right? Yes. And you know me, anything I put my head to, I wanna do it 110%. I love food. Yep. I love cooking. I love people. I love people eating my food. Yeah. What inspires me and drives me the most is when somebody tastes my food, tastes our food, and I put a smile on their face. Oh yeah. I made your day. I saved your day. Yeah. You know how many times we've saved the day from burnt <laughs> turkey dinners and stuff like that? This stuff is what fuels me and gives me the drive to do better, to do more. And I always, I never want you to leave with a sour tongue, a sour taste on your mouth. Yeah. I never want you to leave upset. I'll, anything I can do to make sure you're happy before you leave, Shelby's, I will do. And this is this is what drives me to have the passion for this is because I like to see people smiling and enjoying their food. And that's why I love this business so much. It's, and. I guess why we've grown so much is because people can see the passion we put into yeah. it, you know, and they see how much energy and effort and the things we do, you know, from Love inside the, the shop food. and outside the shop. Yeah. I've done like videos before where I actually show people like this is how I make this, you know, yeah. and, and people are fascinated with that because they didn't know that this is how I see it is built, you know, or, or this is how you marinate the chicken. How does the chicken get so crispy and flavorful? Each, each little thing. Like, remember when I was telling you guys about the hummus? Yeah. If hummus is over a day, we're not going to use it. But it always gets sold every single day. And it's consistently, if I, I'll take you guys to the back later, you'll see chickpeas are being soaked. Chickpeas are being boiled. Chickpeas are in the fridge cooling down. Chickpeas, he's, you can hear him right now, he's blending some up right now. So it's just every single day because hummus takes about four days to make from uh, chickpeas to being soaked overnight, 
to being boiled, to cooling down, wow. to being blended. So we yeah. have to have a consistent cycle for that. And that goes with all our, from our spicy garlic, our garlic sauce, our salad dressings. Yeah. So we have the Shelby salad dressing, the Fatouche dressing. We don't want to just go to like Cisco or something and just buy all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is why Shelby's has a name because we make all this stuff ourselves and we Fresh. put this much effort into it. And people, they know it and they taste it. Yeah. This is what, you know, this is what drives us, man, at the end of the day. Yeah. I hope I answered your question. No, you definitely did. You definitely In detail. Did. In deep detail. There's no short answers for anything you're going to ask. Okay. Okay. So now, being driven and inspired by you know just sharing your, your love of food with, with the people. Off camera we also spoke and you seem pretty big in the community and you seem to love the community of London. Mm -hmm. What is it about London that you that you love? The people. The people? The people here are amazing man. It's actually what got me to stay in the city. And what helped me in this this community is people are so they're so open to I don't want to say helping out but like being a part of something if there's a cause going on people here want to support it if there's a restaurant opening and they hear about you they're gonna come and support it the community here is like one family and that's what kind of kept me in the city that's why I try to get Shelby's to be a part of this community because we want to be a part of this family and I feel that the people of London have, have seen that also and they recognize us for that. Because you know? whenever something is going down that's like unfortunate news, if we hear about it, we're going to try our best to help out in whichever way we can, you know. And we, we do what, what we can with what we have at the end of the day. So there's one thing I noticed just to go back to the community. In the time that we've been in here, like even coming in last night and just sitting around here today, I've seen so many different people, types of people coming in, a diverse, diverse crowd, crowd yes. of people coming in. So that definitely shows that you're embedded in the community, that everyone. Yeah, it's not only Middle Eastern people coming exactly. here. We have Asian folks, we have Pakistani, Looking Indian, around now, yeah. Jamaican, a lot of uh, South American, you know? So like, I think we've captured the whole world diverse crowd in, in this restaurant but that's what we try to do at the same time is appeal to each uh, demographic and crowd and you know and we don't want to make anybody feel left out at all you know, everybody is welcome to Shelby yeah, everybody deserves to eat some good food basically. That's, that's, that's the key right there good food helps good food will keep the people coming yeah and then you can see the people so, keep coming one other thing I know I, I read about quickly this is a, something fun to talk about. This world record thing of yours. <laughs> well, bro, you got a shawarma restaurant. Like, I was like, I thought of this idea three years ago. Okay. I was like, man, we have to hop on this before somebody does it. <laughs> it was like 16 foot rack? Oh, 16 foot, bro. This was 152.3 feet. <laughs> so yeah, we beat the world record and we made 100. 152.3 feet worth of chicken shawarma wrap. How, how, okay. So was we, it a traditional? It was traditional garlic pickles, french fries. WTF, how did that happen? Like, we had, we had I, Mayor Ed Holder, he was our official judge. Okay. He came down, shout out to Mayor Ed Holder. He, where did I get 16 feet from there? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think I'll wear my glasses when I, yeah, he missed the, he missed the, the zero. Wrong. He read the internet wrong. <laughs> But uh, yo, yeah, we had this plan like three years ago, but we were really too busy to kind of like create an event for it. And then Yezin was speaking with the owner of Ribfest, and he was he was asking us like, how can we create some kind of hype for Ribfest right. this year? Then he told him, he's like, we've always wanted to make the largest chicken schwamper app in the world. He's like, perfect, let's do it. So we got 160 feet worth of tables at the Ribfest. We created a lot of uh, hype for it. Um, we teamed up with a local organization called 519 Pursuit. Okay. They help the less fortunate people in the city, homeless people, and they provide them with like emotional support or care packages and okay. stuff. And we worked with them in the winters before where we went and handed out food on the streets. Nice. So we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to shine some light on their organization. Okay. So, Webfest came. 
You made the world record, the world's longest shawarma. Cool. It got caught up, uh, put into trays. 519 Pursuit gathered as many of the homeless people as they could uh, in one shelter, and over 300 uh, less fortunate people in London got fed that chicken shawarma. Beautiful. Wow. And wow. we've got to beat the record. And you got to beat the record. Yeah. So right now we're just waiting for Guinness to send us that book. I'm waiting, Guinness. I'm waiting. Well, you told them about it. They know about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I can submit the proposal and uh, okay. video evidence and meet their criteria and stuff like that. And now I'm just waiting for an answer. That's incredible. So what's the next record you're trying to set? There, we're actually thinking there's Vegan Fest in November. Hey, Vegan Fest, we want to make the longest falafel. Can we do that? Vegan I Fest. I think it's becoming a piece of cake for us. Any measurement you tell us, we're gonna make, we're it, gonna make it. You know what I think you should try? Make the largest, the biggest shawarma. Oh, shawarma plate? Or yeah, a poutine bowl or something. It would be a whole lot of rice. I'll tell my supplier to make us a custom shell piece bowl. And then maybe we can make the, long, the largest shawarma fries in the world. Yeah. The, the options are endless, man. You know what I mean? The, Why, the marketing book is this thick. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there's no shortage of ideas yeah, that we can pull off. But yeah. you know, I think longest falafel might be next. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I can see that. Easy fast. Easy fast. Look out, man. Look out. Show this food express. So what's next for you guys? Well, we got three locations opening up. Yeah. Each one is probably a month apart. So we got downtown Richmond Road, we got North End Masonville, and we got South End White Oaks right off the highway. So anywhere people want Shelby's, we're gonna be there. And we also deliver citywide, anywhere you are. Don't worry, we wanna, we wanna conquer London first once we take over London, because there's still a lot of people in London who don't know about us. Okay. As, as famous as I may think we are, there's still a lot of folks that don't know about us. So and they need to know about us. They need to know, already. and then once we got our foothold in the city, then we'll slowly start to di diversify and well, I want to Toronto hurry up and take over. first. Just well, so it can be selfish, just so we can to Toronto. Uh, <laughs> I can get off that Arsenal since make it strictly so we'll start planting the seeds in Toronto and spreading the word start again. planting you know, the seeds open up the area you heard about that Shelby's you heard about that Shelby's you heard about Shelby's yeah. they got the best shawarma yo. get that blog TO to be on it you know yo. this place from London is we will coming do our to our Toronto part, yo. we will do our part but ground uh, roots uh, definitely take over London. London but guys anything you want you come take a look at our menu see me here, you come talk to me, I'm going to set you up with whatever you want, man. If you're feeling light, you're feeling hungry, you want to indulge, you want something healthy, you want something not so healthy, I got something for everything, all right? You're vegetarian, you're vegan, just let me know, we got something for you. If you have any questions, just feel free to private message us on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll answer your questions right away. I'll get back to you that day, all right? You still Shelby hungry, Food boys? Express. We can go for another round. Okay, so what we're gonna have next? Yeah, what you got in store for us? We're gonna have shish tawuk plate, and we're gonna have beef kebab plate. So shish tawuk is like the Middle Eastern souvlaki. It's chicken breast, marinated overnight in our secret marination. We put it on kebab skewers and make it on the charcoal broiler. And the beef kebab is ground minced beef, and we use 25% lamb in it. It's a mix of lamb, ground lamb, and ground beef. Make it into little kebab skewers and cook it on a charcoal broiler as well. You can get it in a wrap. You can get it on a plate with rice and salad, rice and fries, or fries and salad. I'll even put it on a salad for you if you like. If you want a kebab salad, all right. okay? All sounds good. All those kind of choices, guys. Okay. Trust me, man. You you can eat Shelby's every day for a month, and you won't have tried everything on Monday. I noticed that when we came in yesterday, the menu and the screens were kind of big too. So it's like the menu just took up the whole big flat screen. Like how many? One, two, three. The menus are tough, man. Like yeah. you want to have a limited menu, but then you're like, but we should sell this, and you want to sell this, but you have to take this off. Yeah, no, it's good to have you know a you wide variety. Stuff. We have so we have our boy here, Shrimp Sweets. These guys are sweet geniuses. They make this thing called fettuccine crepe. You ever had a fettuccine crepe? Fettuccine crepe. Okay, it's a crepe, and then he cuts it, with like a pizza cutter, into like little 
fettuccine slice. It's like shoelace slices. Okay. And then he'll have it there, so it's like pasta on top of a plate. And he'll put his ice cream and his strawberries and this and that or whatever. And instead of cutting it with like knife and fork, you just twirl it and you get a nice piece in every single bite. That's it just dope. made crepe so much easier to eat. That is he makes this dope. cheesecake on a stick. He has this lotus stuff that he gets from the States that he'll sell in Canada. Like it's like a brown sugar caramelly kind of. See, well, that's what I was interested in, the cheese stick on the stick. It, Jeez. Is, it, is, it, is, it is some proper stuff. So those are my definitely... Huh. And yo, then the new hype thing that he just came up with is sushi crepe. Where he rolls up a banana with chocolate and all kind of fixings. Inside the sushi, he rolls it, cuts it up into little sushi slices for you and gives you a Nutella dip on the side with some chopsticks. So for everyone out there that's, that has a <laughs> sweet tooth, this is not just a spot for like shawarma or like food. You can get some like proper sweets and desserts. So creative desserts. Creative desserts. This just sounds like heaven. Yeah, it's, 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 this sounds like paradise. If you're all coming from Toronto, you come down here, man, you can make a day out of it and we will take good care of you. You will be... Trust me, we've been taken care of. We've yeah, well taken, care, taken care, of. care of. And I'm, I'm going to endorse and promote London just because of you guys. Just because of Shelby's Food Express. The city of London. The city of London. I got to mail you guys some Shelby's t shirts. Do some it Shelby's done. gear, huh? Alright. Sick, I'll do that, man. Alright. <laughs> nah, seriously, y'all you, you need to come out here. If not to eat at Shelby, just to check out London, but you know you're really coming out here to eat at Shelby's first and foremost. Then you can check out London, but you'll be back. It's well worth the drive, it's well worth coming back for. And I think you'll be seeing us again on a regular basis, on a consistent basis. I, I don't want to say regular. I hope so. I, like need it's to like see, I need to see you guys more often. Yeah, you know, we'll, it's been like a nice eight years since I've seen Nine years. Maybe you've longer. You've seen me in my first year because we went to Brad. And I was about, okay, you're right. Yeah, we, we went did. to Bradford for that couple, for that show. <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> Nine years. Back when you guys were rappers, man. <laughs> That's another show for y'all. <laughs> but yeah, back in show the for day. another time, guys. Yeah. yeah. And this guy supported us. He, he, I think uh, he had a lot of our day CDs. one. I, I think remember. I still have your album. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> we support each other. That was good. That's okay. So it's, it's good to see you. It's great to see you here, guys. man. Having your own business, I say businesses. You're doing big things out here, but trying, man. To see where you came from, how you started, going to high school with my bro, and how that's kind of how I got introduced to you too. But just seeing that whole come up and the little conversations we have every time we come to check you, you had a plan, you had goals, you had aspirations, and just to see everything manifest into what it is now. This morning we were talking, the first thing like we kind of said was like, "Yo, we're proud of Yasser." Yo. Like, you know, we're proud of Yasser because, like, we, we kind of always knew that you were destined to do your own thing and your big, big things in terms of business. And just to see this, it's like, okay, yeah, it happened. And he stuck to the to the plan and the drive, man. You just have like, drive and you have a vision, you have goals. That's all it takes, man. Stick to it. Just stick to it, man. There's going to be mud being thrown at you left, right, and center. Yeah. Just wipe it off and just keep moving, man. We've went through too many roadblocks, you know, but it's just all about overcoming, never stopping to sob, and just keep moving, man. You have tunnel vision, you have a goal, just get it, just get it. Good thing you said that, because that was one of my last questions, like, what are some of the obstacles or challenges, and how did you kind of persevere through all of those? I've had a lot of obstacles, man. We've been punked for a lot of money, we've been screwed over, we've had a lot of roadblocks that have hit us, you know what I mean? Right. But we just, it's all about just keep progressing, man. Yeah. You still have that goal, it hasn't left, keep going for it, man. Don't let these things stop you from doing anything, you know? Okay. And that's for any business, any business, shawarma, art, school, whatever you're trying to do in life. Anything man. in life, basically, just don't let anything. Don't let anything stop you. You have that dream, you have that goal, just get it, man. There's going to be a lot of things stopping you and punching you out of the way. Yeah. You just got to take those punches and keep going, man. Keep going. All right. Now, if anyone needs to get a hold of you, if they want to follow, if they want to just check out just any media information about you, where can they go? You definitely have to follow Shelby's Food Express. It's 
So we're on Instagram, Shelby Sweet Express, and on Facebook, Shelby Sweet Express. I don't really use Twitter that much, but those are the two uh, places that you'll really find me the most on. Okay. And my personal Instagram, I, bar I barely use it, so okay. there's no point in following me. There's nothing interesting there. You want to see all the interesting thing? It's on the Shelby site. There's a lot of interesting on the Shelby site. And I'm not only posting foods, you know, like a lot. Of, you get to meet a lot of my customers. What? why they come to Shelby's, the different demographics we have. Yeah. Everybody's got a reason why they come here, you know? And I like to showcase other local businesses, our suppliers. So you're not only seeing, I'm not only making you hungry, I'm also giving you a feel into like what our lives are like over here. Behind right? the scenes look. Exactly. Yeah. What goes on, in and out. Exactly, all right. So I guess we'll close there. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you again for letting us know about you know, your spot, Shelby's Food Express. Thank you. As we had our rants about the best shawarma <laughs> spots in Toronto. I I'm glad to have converted you, brother. I man. think you have now put a stamp on who the best shawarma spot for the, is for in the Canada. Put on. Uh, what an uh, authentic shawarma is supposed to be. Yeah, it was an honor, boys. It was an honor, man. It was an honor seeing all you guys. Now we can judge others. <laughs> I put know. medicine in your shawarma? It's like, this is not, this is a show. Piece. What is this? <laughs> Don't serve me that. What do you call this? Garlic sauce? I, I might not even be able to eat shawarma in Toronto anymore, man. I'm gonna have to reserve my shawarma cravings for uh, a trip I out think to after London. today, you guys are gonna be big uh, shawarma critics now. Listen, I'll put you on another level. You have turned us into shawarma snobs. We shawarma went back snobs. to the hotel yesterday and all we could talk about was, you know, probably go for another like, shawarma poutine right now. You know, this guy was like, like kind of feel like another poutine still. <laughs> like we talked about it basically the whole night. We woke up this morning, we're like, yeah, we can't wait. That's good, man. Cheers to see what you have in store for us. And it definitely lived up to to the hype I saw on Instagram and the expectations we set for it. It lived up to it and So it's better than the pictures, right? A hundred times better than the pictures. So but the pictures, the pictures are, is good. Thank you, yes. The pictures are great. Actually, come in person, too. yes. Yeah. If not, better. Yeah. The flavor adds to the picture. Now, not, and I can't even look at your Instagram. I'm in Toronto. The addiction is real. The warning was real. Yep. The warning, warning, you will be addicted. Yep. It is. It is something out there, man. You're gonna wake up in cold sweats. Some people ask me, like, do you put crack in it? I'm like, who puts crack in food, man? Do you? <laughs> Nah, man, I just put a lot of love, man. A lot of love and a lot of flavor, man. And that's love what can be addictive. I guess, I guess, yeah, exactly. Love can be addictive. The right kind of love can be addictive. So, he makes it with love, he makes it with passion, and he's passionate about it. And, hey, like I said, I'm going to plug this. this. This is the new spot. Respect. Respect. So we will be bringing you visitors. And you'll be For seeing sure. us. You'll be seeing us back again. That's good, man. My kids actually love shawarma, so you might see them. Come. Bring them, bring them. We'll go pony riding, like we said, man. Uh, I should do that before it gets too cold. We can go all year round. Yeah? Yeah, we go summer, fall, winter. Okay. I know one, two girls are like the horse riding. Horse That's another conversation. It's another vlog. It's another <laughs> show for you. <laughs> but, uh, okay, we'll close out there. And I guess, Excuse would we be dinner? able to... Yeah, we can, have, we can have some... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Sure. Well, it was really nice meeting you guys. Meeting or seeing you? I meant these guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I yeah. guess I got to meet them or see them. Yes. Shelby. I look forward to having you come to Shelby's and feeding you guys and taking good care of you, man, so you can go and talk like this to all your friends. You're pretty good with the camera, eh? Natural, eh? I guess I have. Okay. Yeah, I've been on camera one, two times. All now. right, all right. He'll <laughs> turn the rest of you into shawarma snobs. And shawarma addicts. That too. No crack in the shawarma, though. It's all love. All love, no crack. All right. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah. Always, boys. For now, guys. Deuces. Peace. Peace.